No, your eyes are not deceiving you. There is a brand new Toyota Tundra for the first time in decades, and we're driving it. Jared Rosenholtz here with CarBuzz.com, and we're out driving the all new 2022 Toyota Tundra. And when I say all new, I really mean it. This is the third generation of Toyota's full size truck. The last one came out way back in 2007 when yours truly was still in middle school. So to say this is a big deal would kind of be an understatement. Let's go ahead and check out the 2022 Tundra and see what it's all about. So we're going to start by talking about some of the exterior changes because this is a very different looking truck than the one it replaced. Like a lot of other Toyota models, including the Camry, Toyota has gone for a much more aggressive design here. They call it technical muscle, which I think is a very apt description for this very butch looking Tundra. We've got some very angular headlights here, LEDs here on this SR5 model. Now, just like the Chevy Silverado, we have this big, massive, intimidating grill here. And it kind of depends on which trim you get because a lot of them have different grill patterns. I happen to really like this SR5 model that we're standing in front of that also has an optional TRD Sport package that makes it look a little bit more aggressive. Just a very simple black plastic grill. I think that some of the grills on the new Tundra tend to look a little gaudy. There's one that sort of has a silver lip above it that I think makes it look like the Tundra has a handlebar mustache. Toyota will offer the Tundra in two body styles. You've got this, which is the double cab, and then you have the longer Crew Max configuration. So as you can see, this double cab model has some small rear doors here. Now that's not so great for passenger space as we'll see later, but you do get some bigger beds here. You can either get a six and a half or an 8.1 foot bed, whereas the larger Crew Max can only have a five and a half or six and a half foot bed. And I really like how this particular one is configured. We've got the SR5, which is second from the bottom trim in this really lovely lunar rock shade. I think they actually introduced this on the TRD Pro models first. And we have a TRD Sport model, which gets you these cool black wheels. There's also a TRD off-road package if you want your truck to look a little bit more rugged without opting for that TRD Pro model, which sits at the top of the range and costs significantly more. Now, one of the biggest changes comes here at the back where the leaf springs from the outgoing generation model are gone in favor of a new independent setup now with coil springs. That should help us get a better ride and more stability out on the road. Now, although I wasn't in love with the front styling, I think that the rear is quite a bit better. I think these thin taillights look really cool. They have a very cool turn signal pattern as well. And here at the back, we have a new composite bed option that wasn't available before. Toyota has been offering this on the Tacoma for quite a while now, but they finally decided to offer it here on the Tundra, which is nice. So you don't technically need to get a bed liner. Now let's hop onto the interior and check out what I think is the most important change here on the Tundra, the interior. Interior. Now, the second generation Tundra came out way back in 2007 and it really felt like it. They did a little bit of changes here and there with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to try and make it feel modern, but it really was lagging behind the American trucks in a big way. Not anymore. We're sitting in the 1794 edition, which is at the top of the Tundra trim pyramid. You also have the Platinum, which has a lot of the same content we see here, except you get black leather seats with blue stitching. I happen to much prefer the 1794. You can either get this dark brown or you can get like a lighter tan. You get all this wood trim around the cabin. I think this is the best looking interior you can get on a Tundra if you're willing to spend the money on it. At least here on this upper trim model, we have have a ton of handy features. We've got our heated and ventilated seats, which you can actually get a little bit lower down. You can get that starting on the limited trim. So a pretty inexpensive way to get heated and ventilated seats. We also have automatic climate control. Of course, we've got this big glass panoramic roof. It is massive. We also have the feature where the rear window slides down. That is a lovely Tundra option as well. I'm glad to see they carried that back. Then there's some other cool things. We have this digital gauge cluster over here replacing the analog gauges. Now the lower end trucks still get analog gauges with a little hyper screen, but I really like this new digital setup. When you go ahead and change the drive modes here on this upper trim truck, you're going to see that the gauges change a little bit. They look really nice and just give this more of a modern touch. But if we're talking about modern, there's nothing more so than this giant 
14 inch infotainment system that is brand new for Toyota. Right here you see it's displaying a map really quick really easy and responsive because it has a lot of processing power. Toyota is making some big claims here. They're saying that this is going to be so good, you're actually not going to want to use Apple CarPlay. And I haven't had hours and hours to play around with it. But upon first inspection, I would say Toyota's claims are pretty accurate. The system is super easy. You've got this ribbon off to the left here so you can pull up your music phone, different vehicle settings very easily. Right here you have your search function that's going to pull up your voice command or you can hit it and say, hey Toyota, and it will take you different places. I found that the voice command works extremely well, pretty much as well as Google. That's because Google had a huge part in developing this system, which is why it works so well. And because we have a higher trim truck, when I go ahead and toss it into reverse, you're going to see that we have a very nice 360 degree camera. You can also use this off-roading if you get a truck with the TRD off-roading package. Now, this 14-inch screen is optional. The base touchscreen is still an 8-inch unit, but I really suggest opting for this screen. You don't want to miss out on these amazing features. And you can get it quite low in the trim range. I sat in an SR5, the second from the bottom, and you were able to get it with this touchscreen. Now, as I mentioned when we were doing the walk around, if you get this double cab model, you're not going to have a lot of space for rear passengers. This rear door just isn't very big. So as you can see, I don't have a lot of leg room. My headroom is just fine, but I wouldn't want to stay back here for too long. I'd want to go for the crew max option. Now, whereas the double cab doesn't offer a lot of space for people in the back, the crew max is the exact opposite. Just look at how much space I have back here. My knees are nowhere near touching. I can sprawl out in comfort with plenty of leg and headroom because of these massive rear doors, which by the way, have sunshades here on the 1794 edition. You'll also notice some other very nice luxury touches like these power retractable running boards, which are replaced if you get the TRD off-road package. We also have both heated and ventilated seats back here. This is one of the first trucks outside of the Ram 1500 to offer ventilated seats in the rear, which I'm very impressed with. They are very comfortable as well. And by the way, you can go ahead and lift up the seat bottoms for extra storage. And let's just say you wanted to put your dog back here, lay down a big blanket, and you didn't want them scratching up this nice leather. You can go ahead and pull these straps and the seats will actually fold down like this. And then your doggy will have a nice little area to lay down on. So as we get the new Tundra out on the road, it is a perfect time to remind everybody to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. If you want to learn even more about the all new 2022 Toyota Tundra, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. Now back to the video. So as we get the Tundra out on the road, the big story is here. The V8 engine is gone after many decades in production and Toyota will now offer two, count them, two twin turbocharged V6 engine, both displacing 3.5 liters. We're starting here with the base V6, but Toyota doesn't really want you to call it that because it is really powerful for a quote unquote base engine. It produces 389 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. Now that's a small increase in horsepower over the outgoing V8, but it is a massive increase in torque. As with the previous generation, you can get a Tundra with rear wheel drive or you can opt for four wheel drive, but the big changes here, that old six speed slush box is is gone. Good riddance. Sayonara. See you later. Don't write. We've got a new 10 speed automatic transmission that's kind of similar to what you'll find in the Lexus LS 500 and LC 500. And just like those cars, it is smooth buttery smooth. I love this 10 speed automatic transmission. It is such a massive improvement over the big gaps in the ratios that you could feel with that old six speed unit. For example, I'm going to put my foot down now. We've got really quick changes. I've got all the power barely felt that shift. In fact, no matter what amount of throttle you give this, you just really don't feel this transmission ever get caught like flat footed, especially if you have it in one of the sportier drive modes. It is just a really clever, smart transmission and it offers one of the smoothest shifts I've felt in any truck. It's definitely up there with the GM 10 speed and the Ram eight speed. 
And I'm not sure if I like the transmission or the engine more. If you were one of those people that was worried when Toyota announced that it was gonna get rid of the V8 and go to a V6, that it wouldn't sound as good, well, I can definitely assuage you of those feelings because listen to this. Ooh, it sounds really deep, really grunty. It emits a really nice growl. And just like that V8, this V6 feels very understressed. So you never really have to give it a whole lot of throttle to get where you're going, thanks to those mountains of torque. And compared to the old Tundra, which felt like this big, cumbersome thing, this new Tundra has various personalities. The steering is very light, but pretty direct, and you can actually change the steering, at least on this high trim Platinum model that we're driving using the drive mode selector. So we've got a Sport S and a Sport S Plus mode. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in Sport S Plus, and I really feel the steering tighten up, and I have a much more direct control over what the front end is doing. It's kind of cool. I think you'll really like it. And the other thing that I've noted is that that independent rear suspension that I mentioned earlier, it's still a little bit bouncy to me. It's definitely not as comfortable as the Ram 1500. That is still the benchmark for comfort in this class, but it definitely rides better than the old Tundra. And I've noticed that when you put it in Sport Plus mode and it actually firms up, we've got the optional rear air suspension. With that firmed up, I think it bounces around a little bit less. So it is a pretty, overall comfortable truck, not the most comfortable in its class, but I do like how it drives. So I've been very impressed by this base iForce Max twin turbo V6, but it is not the biggest story here. Toyota will offer an optional iForce Max V6, same size, three and a half liter twin turbo V6, but that one adds a hybrid system, which we know Toyota is very good at. So let's go ahead and hop out of this truck with the regular V6 and into one with the new hybrid. So as you can now probably tell by the change of the seat color, we are now driving the iForce Max. They're giving it a very manly name to describe the hybrid because boy oh boy does it produce a lot of power and a lot of torque. So whereas the regular gas engine produces 389 horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque, this one goes all the way up to 437 horsepower at 5,200 RPM and we've got a staggering 580 83 pound-feet of torque at only 2,400 RPM. And unlike any previous Toyota hybrid, you know, most of them use a planetary gear set, which is a lot like a CBT. You get that sort of rah, rah, droning. That's not how Toyota has decided to build this new Tundra. Instead, they've stuck the electric motor between the engine and the transmission so that it can provide all of that juicy electric low-end torque at low speeds. And then by the time the turbos of the engine are spooled up, you're already going at some high speeds. So I just noticed now that I have my battery kind of charged up and I was going on sort of a downhill slope, you'll notice that the engine will eventually kick off. So if you're coasting and you don't need the twin turbocharged V6, it will cut it entirely and just ride on the electric power to save fuel. Now, unfortunately, we don't have fuel economy for the hybrid, though we do suspect that it will be better than the gas engine version for obvious reasons. I will go ahead and post the gas fuel economies, which we do have the estimates of down here on the bottom of the screen. They stack up pretty well against competitive power options, but I'm really excited to see if this twin turbocharged V6 iForce Max can dethrone the Ford F-150 Power Boost, also a very manly name, which gets 24 MPG in the city, highway, and combined. I would say if you are in the market for a new Tundra, I really like the base powertrain, but I think this hybrid one is even smoother. You've just got that electric torque when you need it, so you go ahead and put your foot down, it kicks the engine on immediately, and woo, you just go sailing. You still get that good grunty noise that you get from the regular V6, so the hybrid doesn't do anything to take away from that but you just get more power, more torque, and more than likely, better fuel economy. So I think if you are in the market for one of these Tundras and price isn't really a factor for you, I think you might as well go for the hybrid. We'll have to wait and see for full pricing to see how much more this iForce Max engine costs. Because if it's a hefty premium, I think that the base engine is fine and you're not really gonna suffer if you don't opt for this hybrid drivetrain. Now, before we close out our driving segment, we've gotta talk about everybody's favorite truck subject, 
towing. So the Tundra will tow a maximum of 12,000 pounds. That's with the hybrid drivetrain. This regular gas engine that I'm towing with now will tow a little bit less. Now that is 17.6% more than what you used to be able to tow with the V8 Tundra, but I must admit that the American trucks, that being the Ram, GMC, Chevy, and Ford, can all tow more than this new Tundra. Now as we pull over from our drive, this is usually where we like to talk about pricing, but unfortunately it wasn't available Available as of this filming. Toyota will offer the Tundra in six different trim levels. There's the base SR, the SR5, the limited trim, the platinum, the 1794 edition, and the off-road ready TRD Pro model. If money is no object, we absolutely adored the interior of the 1794. It really feels like Toyota got a lot of inspiration from Lexus here, but if you don't have an unlimited budget, I think that the limited trim offers the luxury features that you want to make the Tundra comfortable, but without breaking the bank. If you want to customize your Tundra a little bit, you can get one of two packages. There is a TRD Sport model available for the SR5 trim, or on the upper trim levels, you can add a TRD off-road package, which is going to give you a little bit of the functionality that you get from the TRD Pro, but without the added cost. So that was the 2022 Toyota Tundra. I don't think that this truck is gonna come along and completely redefine the full-size segment because truck buyers are just way too loyal to their brand to stray off of that path. But if you are a loyal Toyota buyer and you have the previous generation Tundra, this is a huge upgrade both under the hood and in the cabin. And I think it is finally worth upgrading after more than a decade. The 2022 Toyota Tundra is finally no longer an afterthought in the full-size truck segment. I hope you've enjoyed this review of the 2022 Toyota Tundra, and it would be a huge help if you would leave a like down on our YouTube video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And if you want to learn more about the 2022 Toyota Tundra, head over to carbuzz.com. We'll keep you updated on things like fuel economy and price as they become available. I'll see you next time.